Like many musicians, John Santos has converted his garage into a music studio. It's a bit cozy for his large Latin jazz band, the Machete Ensemble. Okay, there you go. We have uh, basically an 11 piece band. Mainly it's made up of lead singer and a background singer. And uh, we have a keyboard player and a bass player and a drum set player. And then we have four horns. And then that, that right there is more like a jazz band. And then what we add to that is the percussion. We have two percussionists, myself and Orestes Vilato, who's a living legend. And we bring in the Latin percussion part. It's jazz with a Latin twist, but the music is not so easy to define. Jazz is a, is a very indescribable thing. Jazz, jazz itself is more of a state, a state of mind. Jazz is not a style of music. Swing is a style of music. Bebop is a style of music. Dixieland is a style of music. All those things are jazz, and jazz is more like, like what Thelonious Monk would describe it as being its freedom. And so Latin jazz is part of that, but just with a Latin flavor. We, use some, we have a whole other uh, world of rhythms and timbres from the different instruments that we bring in by having the Latin side. One, two, one, oh, four, three, four, three, four. The music Machete plays is eclectic, a heady mix of Latin dance, Afro-Caribbean folk, experimental jazz, and even the blues. So if I stay tomorrow, what would I have to gain? The mood here today is bittersweet. After 21 years together, the Machete Ensemble is calling it quits. Their music won critical acclaim in a devoted audience, but according to Santos, the deck is stacked against artists who don't fit into a simple category. Decent paying shows for the large band got too few and far between, and it was hard to keep the motor running. This will be the last time I ever have to play this piece. They're rehearsing for a farewell concert, revisiting over two decades of music as they prepare to bid adios to their fans. No lo veo negativo, lo veo como una cosa que fue muy bonita, duró 21 años, se hicieron muchos experimentos musicales y, y ahora se pasa la página para seguir haciendo otras cosas. Nada termina ahí, eh, mientras que estemos aquí en este mundo, la vida y la... Inspiration sigue. <laughs> John Santos was born and raised in San Francisco's Mission District, with family roots in Puerto Rico and Cape Verde. Grandparents on both sides were musicians, and Santos started playing drums at a very early age. You know, my grandfather had a band, so I saw people playing conga drums and bongo drums and timbales in my grandma's house, and those are like my earliest memories. As a teenager, Santos got inspired by the groovy local rock and roll scene. In the end of the 60s, my older brothers and cousins went to Mission High School with Carlos Santana. When they came, came and said, man, there's this guy playing blues and electric guitar, great player, and he's using conga drums and timbales behind him. And that was exciting for us because we knew the instruments of the congas and timbales, but those are the instruments of our grandparents, and it kind of legitimized it in a different way for us. So we really dug into that, you know, right away when Carlos's first record came out, you know, that was like our Bible. And I joined his band in 1976, and um, I lasted three weeks, two or three weeks, I was fired out of that because I, w I was 21 years old at the time and not really ready for that gig. John went on to join and form many other bands after that and to become a respected scholar of Latin percussion and Afro-Caribbean music. This is called a chequere. That's a, um, the Cuban word for this, but this is an African instrument. And uh, basically you get the sound by striking it, shaking it, and, and uh, tapping on it.
This is the guido. People are familiar with this um, rhythm because of the cha cha cha. Cha cha cha. These are the claves, and uh, these are deceptive because they're just two sticks. If you were to just grab these like any two sticks and hit them together, they sound dead. But when you hold them properly, then, then they resonate. But the music is built on this rhythm. The bongos are a Creole Cuban instrument invented in Cuba, an instrument that you don't really find in Africa. The timbales are also a fascinating instrument, and they're indispensable in salsa music. Latin jazz uses them a great deal. They're exciting because they're, they are a loud instrument. They, you know, they're, they're wonderful as a solo instrument. The relationship between jazz and, and Latin music is really uh, connected. We tend to look at Latin music as something foreign, like that's something from another country. We're trying to counteract that by saying the actual heart of the Americas is the Caribbean. Four, five. Okay, is that still good for you? It's the night of the farewell concert at the SF Jazz Fest. In spite of the band breaking up, the mood is far from gloomy. This is a New Orleans style funeral. There's a little bit of somberness, but but uh, come back from the from the graves from the graveside uh, party. Honestly, you know, it is very sad that the band is breaking up because there's a lot of dynamics in the music business now. And unfortunately, for organic music of this type, they are not very supportive. But I think it's also a very special night because it brings together a lot of the people that were there with the group originally. To be a jazz musician, it's not, you don't do that because you're, you're gonna get, you want to make money. You don't do that for that reason. You do it because it's an honor to be part of that tradition. And it's the same with these Latin American traditions. So everybody in this group, I think, has that perspective and that makes it also special. These talented musicians will continue collaborating. Wayne Wallace has recruited many of the Macheteros for his Latin jazz group. And John Santos is recording and performing with a new quintet. So the beat goes on.